What is going on YouTube? I knew you couldn't resist this series. We are now on page 12 through 14 in our midterm review. I hope this is helpful and I hope you also enjoy. All right, so the that hustle, that grind continues. We're on page 12, number 34. This is saying use the hinge theorem and the diagrams below to choose the statement which must be true. So key thing here is it's saying they want us to use hinge theorem. With hinge theorem, you have to have two sides that are congruent. So I have this side and this side is congruent and this one and this one are congruent. So we have the two sides that are congruent. So I would be able to find either the longest side or the long or the biggest angle based on the information here. So if I'm looking here, I'm actually given side values. So I have a side value of 17 and a side value of 15. Well, I know that 17 is greater than 15. So across from the biggest side will be the biggest angle. So across from the 17 will be the bigger angle. So one would be greater than across from 15 would be three. So the thing I wanna know is that angle one is greater than angle three. And the one that says that is C. Okay, so now on that same page, we're looking at number 35. It says answer each of the following using the triangle at the right. So I'm going to look at this triangle. They want me to, one of the things is find X. So in order to find X, I need to know a little bit of information. So one thing they told me is that the sides here are congruent. So this from J to K is congruent to K to H. Now, I also have a right angle here. And if I have a right angle on this side, that means I would also have a right angle on this side because a straight line would have to equal 180. So 90 plus 90 equals 180. Now, there is something in here that I can assume just by seeing it. And that's our reflexive property. So reflexive is when two triangles share the same side. So now I have a side, an angle, and a side. So side, angle, side can uh, prove congruence. So if they are congruent, then I also would be able to know that this side and this side are equal to each other or congruent. So I can set it up to solve for x now by doing 4x minus 3 equals 3x plus 2. So now I'm going to try to get x by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And I'm also going to add 3 to both sides. So that will cross out the 3x on this side and then this would cancel out the 3 here. So 4x minus 3x is 1x or just x and then 2 plus 3 is 5. So the value of x would be 5. Now, if we look at part B, it says, if the measure of angle HJI is 70 degrees, so HJI, J, the most important, so HJI, this one's supposed to be 70, find the value of JHI, JHI, so this angle right here. Well, if these, two triangles are congruent because of side angle side based on 
CPCTC corresponding uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. I would also know that that is 70 degrees. So without having to do anything special, I could find that that angle is 70. Now part C says if the measure of angle HJI, HJI, the one that we already wrote 70, is 70 degrees, find angle JIK. J I K. So I'm only talking about the portion on this side. So that's the only part I'm talking about there. So the way we're going to find this out is with triangle sum. So Triangle sum theorem is when you add all the angles inside a triangle, they have to equal 180. So I'm going to take 70 plus 90 plus, and I don't know what this angle is yet, so I'm going to put x equals 180. Well, combine these together, you get 160 plus x equals 180. Subtract 160 from both sides. And I get X equals 20. So in this case, this angle right here would be 20 degrees. Then part D the last question on here, it says, explain what kind of triangle HIJ, so the full triangle is, and explain how you know this. So I know, based on the markings and the angles I have in here, that this is an isosceles triangle. Now, we know this because you have base angles and base angles have to be congruent. So they both equaled 70. So there's our base angles. And I also know, know it because two sides are congruent. And the two sides are called legs. So the two congruent sides will be our legs. So this is how I saw that these, or what this triangle is, which is isosceles. All right, so now we're on page 13. Now we're dealing with similarity. This is the new unit that you should have been working on in my class as well. It says, given that the line segment BC and DE are parallel, Find the length of BD using the triangle below. So I'm going to be trying to find the length of BD. They did not give me a value there, so I'm going to go ahead and put a variable, and in this case, I use X. So we are going to be trying to uh, figure out X by setting up a proportion. So something that helps some people is when you're dealing with this is to draw it as two separate triangles. So you have one big triangle and you also have one small triangle. So for the small triangle, this portion's 10 and this portion is four. Now, if I look at the full length, the full length, you have a 10 and a 15. And added together, that equals 25. Now, on the side here, you have a 4 and an X. Now, I don't know what the X is, but I know that to find the full length, I would have to add them together. So I would have 4 plus x is that side. 
So I want to set up a proportion now. So let's say if I did the small triangles together, I would have the, or sorry, if I did 10, the 10 correlates with the 25. So let's do 10 over 25 equals four. So I started with the small triangle, so I'm gonna start with that again. Four over the full length four plus X. Well, now you do your cross product. Twenty five times four is one hundred. Then you have ten times four plus X. So what you have to do is now distribute this into both. So 100 equals 10 times 4 is 40. 10 times x is 10x. So now I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. And you have 60 equals 10x. Now I'm trying to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide each side by 10, and 60 divided by 10 is 6. So x equals 6. So the uh, length of BD would be 6. All right, so Next problem is number 37. It says, in the diagram, the two triangles are similar. Find the value of x. So x is right here. So I notice these symbols in here, which means that these lines are parallel. Those are parallel. We're going to be end up, because you have these two triangles, trying to set up a proportion right now if I'm trying to solve for x. So if you wanted to, you could do like what we did on the last one. I can draw a small triangle and a big triangle. So the bottom of the small one was 5. On the right side of it was 6. Now if I did the big triangle, the full length of the right side would be the portion 6 and the portion x. So that would be 6 plus x. Then the bottom portion, I was told, of the big triangle is 7. So if I wanted to do this and set up a portion, the 5 could go with the 7 of this triangle. So 5 over 7 equals so I started with the small triangle first, so I'm going to start with the small one again. So I would have now 6 on top in the numerator, and in the denominator I would have 6 plus x. So now you want to do your cross product. 7 times 6 is 42. 42 equals... 5 times 6 plus x. So you want to distribute the 5 into both, which means you're going to have 42 equals 5 times 6 is 30, plus 5 times x is 5x. Subtract. 30 from both sides. So now I have 12 equals 5x. Divide by 5 so that x gets by itself. And you get an answer of 12 over 5. So it is okay to leave your answer like this because this fraction is simplified down as far as it can go. Okay, so last problem on page 13. 
it's wanting us to prove that QS is parallel to the line segment PT if PQ is 5, QR is 2, RS is 4, and ST is 10. Justify your answer algebraically. Well, to prove that the lines are parallel, we have to prove that the sides are proportionate. So we could do just like we were doing before and draw the triangle separately if you wanted. So you have one small triangle and one big triangle. So with the small one, you have side lengths of two and four. And then if I wanted the full length on the left side, I would have five plus two is seven. And the full length on the right side, four plus 10 is 14. So in this case, the two goes with the seven. And that can't be broken down anymore. So I have a proportion two to seven. So that means my other one's going to have to have that same one. So if I look at the other one, you have 4 over 14. At first glance, it seems they're different, but you want to make sure you check for the GCF, the greatest common factor. And if I divide the numerator and the denominator by 2, I would actually get 2 over 7 as well. So this would prove that QS is parallel to PT. Okay, so on page 14, it's telling you in the diagram below, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DBF. So remember when you just have the squiggly that's saying that they're similar. So find the length of BF. So BF is what you're trying to solve for. So again, if you wanted to, you could break up these triangles uh, so that you can see what goes with what. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and say which ones go with which. Now, the 5 is the smaller part of the triangle. That correlates with the big part on the bottom here. So DF correlates with AC. So you also can figure this out by the order of the letters here. So A goes with D, C goes with F. So I could, if I'm setting up a proportion, do 5 over 12.5. This is supposed to equal this side, so BF goes with the full length BC. So BF, I don't know what it is, so I put the variable X. Now the full length has the X and the 15, so I'm going to do X plus 15. Now you would do your cross product. And now I'd have 12.5 times x is 12.5x equals 5 times x plus 15. I'm just writing it out like this so that you know you have to distribute it into both. So 12.5x equals 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 15 is 75. My next step would be to subtract 5x from both sides. This would get me 7.5x equals 75. Divide each side by 10. 
sorry, not by 10, by 7.5. I was getting ahead of myself. And X would equal 10. So I just had a little bit of a brain fart there and started telling you what the answer was beforehand. BF is equal to 10. Okay, so the last problem in this video and on this page, it's saying you are knowing that triangle ACB is similar to triangle AED, solve for AC. So what I'm trying to solve for is AC. That's what I'm trying to solve for. So just like the one that we did, we want to set up a uh, proportion so saying which ones go with what so if I did the bottom part BC goes with DE so I could start off by doing 10 over 15 this is going to correlate so I started with the smaller triangle first so I'll start with the smaller one again A to C we said is X because I don't know what it is and then the full length from A to E would have to be both of these portions. So X plus four. So now I wanna do my cross product. And you have 15 times X, which is 15 X, 10, times x plus 4. Remember that when you're doing this, you are distributing into both. So you still have the 15x over here, but 10 times x is 10x, and 10 times 4 is 40. So I'm trying to end up getting x by itself, so what I'm going to do is subtract 10x from both sides. And I'm going to get 5x equals 40. Divide each side by 5 so that I can get x by itself. And x equals 8. So in this case, the line segment AC is equal to 8. So that's the end of another video. Thank you so much for watching. I know you're probably sad that it's the end of the video, but I do have a plan to make you feel better. And that is if you like and subscribe. I know it's always helped me. If you don't believe me, give it a shot and see if it does. So, but more videos to come. Thank you again for watching.